In this video, we'll start looking at strings in Java. We'll start by understanding what we mean by string and why do we need to use them in Java. We'll understand what we mean by methods and how to use them with our string objects. We'll look at the first method in our string class, which is the length method. We'll understand what we mean by application programming interface or an API. And then we'll look at two other string methods, which are the two uppercase and two lowercase methods. So far, we've seen that we have eight different primitive data types in Java. However, Java does not have any primitive data type that will hold or store a series of characters. The car data type, which is a primitive data type, can only hold one character at a time. So strings, we use them to store a series of characters. Strings are considered a class, not a primitive type. So primitive data types, we use them to store data. Classes, we use them to store data, and they also offer us some methods or code to manipulate this data. Now, when we create a string object, we will have access to all the methods that are available in that string class. So now we are not calling that variable, we are calling it an object. So when we create a copy of the string class, we call it an object, it's not considered a variable anymore. So let's look at some examples of a string. So here I'm creating a string called first name and I'm storing John inside it. Another string called last name, I'm storing the value Smith inside it. And a string called city, I'm storing the value Chicago in it. Notice that string laterals are surrounded by double quotations. So anything that you put inside these double quotations will be stored as it is in the memory. Now, first name, last name, and city are not considered variables anymore. We call them object references. So whenever you create a string, you are creating an object. You are not creating a variable. And the identifier you gave is not a variable name. It's called an object reference. Remember, the S in the keyword string is in uppercase. Strings are considered, or the string is considered a class. And as we learned before from our naming convention in Java, we use uppercases for the first character in the class name. So when you create a string, the keyword string has to be starting with an uppercase S. So let's try to create these string variables in Eclipse. In my main method, I'm going to create a string. Again, the S in the keyword string has to be in uppercase. I'm creating a name. And in that name, I'm storing the value Sam. I'm creating another variable or another object of the type string. And I'm calling it city. And inside it, I'm storing Chicago. Now, if I try to print these variables, so system, dot out, dot print line. I can use the object reference name, and that will print out the name that we stored in that object, which is Sam. I can also print out my city, so system, dot out, dot print line, city, and that will print out the city that I stored in there, which is Chicago. So if I go and run this program, you'll see I'm printing Sam and Chicago out. Notice that Sam was stored with an uppercase S and it was printed with an uppercase S. So the case of the characters we are storing in our strings will be maintained. If I have spaces, these spaces will also be stored because the space is considered a character. So if I had a space between the A and the M, that will be also stored and that's how it will be printed. So now that we have created our string object, we will have access to all the methods available in the string class. And the method is basically just a collection of statements that perform a specific task or an operation. The string class will have multiple methods that will allow us to perform operations on the data we stored in that string object. To use a method, we will be calling that method on that object. So to invoke a method on an object, we call it calling that method. And to call a method, we will use the dot notation. The dot notation is basically 
using the object reference, the name we gave to our object, then a dot, which is our dot notation, followed by the method name. So the object reference dot the method name. So let's start looking at the first string method, which is the length method. The length method is a simple method that will tell you how many characters we have in that string object. So it will count how many characters we have in that string object. So when we use it on an object, it will give us back or return an integer number. And this integer number, you can either store it or you can print it out to the console directly to the user. So to use the length method, you will use the object reference dot length. So the object reference dot the name of the method and the name of the method in this case is length. So if we created an object of that string class called name, we'll be using name.length. And that will return back or give us back the number of characters we stored in that name object. It's important to remember that the parentheses are part of the length method. All methods use parentheses. Some of them will have some values inside these parentheses, and some of them, they have empty parentheses like the length method. If you forgot to put these parentheses with the method name, you will get a compilation error or even your code will not compile if you use Eclipse. So let's try to use that length method in Eclipse here. So I have my two string objects, name and city. And instead of printing the name, which will print Sam, I want to print name.length. So name dot, and notice in Eclipse, when you use the dot notation, it will give you a list of all the available methods in that objects class. The one I'm going to use is the length. And you will see in Eclipse, it tells you that it's going to return an integer. So when you call that method, the value you are getting back is of a type int, which is an integer. So let's try to print the number of characters we have in the name object and the number of characters we have in the city object. I'm going to save it and run it and see what will happen. Notice for the name, we got three, which is the number of characters we have in Sam. One, two, three. For Chicago, we have seven characters, and that's the number we printed out here. Remember, the space is also considered a character. So if I had a space after the name Sam and saved it, run it again, you'll see that the number of characters now is four. So the length of that string is four characters now instead of three. So how do we know what methods are available in our class? Usually when a programmer creates a class, in this case, the string class was created by Java developers, they will provide something called an application programming interface or an API. And an API is basically a list of all the things available in that class. So it will include information that will tell you how you can use that class, how to create objects, what data you can store in that class object, and all the methods in that class. For each method, you will get the name of that method, what data type it will be returning, if it's taking any argument lists, and we'll go over this in a bit, and then a description which tells you what exactly this method is going to do. So if we look back at our length method, this is the API, this is a snippet from the string API. You will see we have at the beginning the return type, and this will tell you what data type will be returned. And remember, the length will return the number of characters we have, which is basically an integer. You will also see the method name, and this is the one you use to call that method. Remember, object reference dot method name, and this is the method name we use. Then you will have the argument list, and this is the any extra data that you want to add to that method. So this method will need some extra data to perform operations, and usually you will have that inside the parentheses. The length method does not need any extra data, and that's why you see that the parentheses are empty. Then you will have a description about that method, which will tell you what this method will do. And you will see it returns the number of characters in the string. So let's look at two other methods available in the string API, which are the to uppercase and to lowercase. The method name is to uppercase. It's going to return back a string object. And what it's going to do, it's going to return a copy of the string with all the letters converted to uppercase. Now, this is returning a copy of the string. It's not going to change the original string in the memory. 
To lower case, we'll do the opposite thing. It's going to return a string. It's a copy of the string with all the letters converted to lower case. So let's try these two methods in Eclipse. So I still have my two string objects, name and city. Instead of printing the length of the name, I'm going to print the length af or the name after converting all the characters to uppercase. So to uppercase. Same thing I'm going to do with the city to uppercase. So what will that do? It will take a copy of that name and it will convert it to uppercase and print it out to the um, console. It's not going to change anything in the memory. So if I go back and print system dot out dot print line and print the city again, the city will print, be printed in the original way it was stored in the memory because this is not changing the city itself. It's just taking a copy and printing that copy as an uppercase. So let's save and run. So we'll see that Sam and Chicago, these two first print lines, were printed in all uppercase. No matter how it was, it was saved in the memory before, it will take a copy and it will get all the characters in uppercase. Notice when we printed city, we printed the original value that was stored in city and we stored city with only the C as an uppercase character. So what if you wanted to save the new value? In that case, you can create another string. So string, for example, city uppercase. So in here, I can get the copy of the city. So city dot to uppercase. So now I have two variables, one, the original variable that has Chicago stored in it. And then I have another variable or object, since we are dealing with strings, city upper, and we are storing a copy of the city after converting it to uppercase. So city upper will have now Chicago stored in all uppercase characters. Now, if you wanted to change the city itself to all uppercase, you do not want to create a copy. What you can do is actually just use the same object reference. So city equals city to, to uppercase. So first, we evaluate the expression on the right of the assignment. So we are getting a copy of the city, making it all uppercase. And then we are storing that all uppercase um, city name, which is Chicago. We are storing it back into the same reference, which is city. So now city will be changed in the memory and it will have Chicago in all uppercase. Remember, if you already have the variable or this object already created, you cannot, you, uh, you cannot redefine that variable or object. So I cannot go and say string city because city is already defined. This variable or object was already declared. So to use that city location in the memory, you can use the name without using the data type, which basically declares a new object or a new variable. So when we used city equals city dot to uppercase, that means the original object city now has changed in the memory. And if we run this code again, you'll see that when we printed city, city was printed as Chicago in all uppercase.